One of the most powerful and fastest cars in the 1980s wasn't a Ferrari, Porsche, or Lamborghini. It was a Corvette with a tuned port injection 350 small block and twin turbos. At certain Chevrolet dealerships, you could option the RPO code B2K on the 1987 to 1991 Chevrolet Corvette. This meant after production in Bowling Green, Kentucky, the car would be sent off to Old Lime, Connecticut to Callaway for the installation of twin turbochargers. This would transform the adequate power of the Corvette to absolutely mental. A one-off Callaway Twin Turbo Corvette would then go off to set a world record 255 mile an hour top speed while being emissions compliant and air conditioned. Today on Explain, let's dive into how the fastest car of the 80s made so much power. It all begins with the C4 Corvette, which in 1986 wasn't a powerhouse we know Corvettes as today. The L98 5.7 liter V8 found in the C4 was underwhelming with only 230 horsepower, but the C4 chassis itself was competitive for its time. Unlike the C3's body on frame, the C4 was a uniframe construction and improvements to the braking and handling left one piece of the puzzle to be solved, the engine. Chief Corvette engineer Dave McLean looked to solve this issue by turbocharging the Corvette and getting a hotshot engineer to do it for them. Enter Reeves Calloway, an aspiring race car driver building turbo kits for Volkswagens and Alfa Romeos in his garage. By November of 1986, the Calloway team had built their first initial prototype called the Twin Turbo B2K. <laughs> The engine in the B2K differed greatly from the factory L98. The factory L98 block casting was thoroughly inspected and line honed. The four bolt main caps were splayed, which means that they were drilled at an angle to increase rigidity. A forged 1053 steel crankshaft with polished journals and forged connecting rods replaced the cast rotating assembly. The compression ratio was lowered to 7.5 to one with forged molly pistons and plasma molly piston rings. To maintain emissions compliance, the camshaft grind and cylinder heads remained factory, but the valve springs were swapped to ones with more seat pressure. Attached to the engine is two Rotomaster turbochargers, which were oil and water cooled and twin air to air intercoolers. Output was 345 horsepower and 465 diesel like pound feet of torque. Later revisions would get all the way up to 402 horsepower and 582 foot-pounds of torque, which at the time was world-class power. But even Callaway Engineering knew that wasn't enough. In 1988, one specific B2K Corvette was taken to the extreme, chassis 1988-051 to be exact. This one received the revised intake manifold and throttle body to free up some high RPM power, custom grind camshaft and ported cylinder heads. The turbo boost pressure was increased all the way to a whopping 22 pounds of boost, which led to an output of 898 horsepower and 772 pound-feet of torque. Callaway was adamant on retaining all the stock interior options of the B2K. It still retained air conditioning, power seats, and the only addition was a roll cage and fire equipment. On October 26, 1988, the nicknamed Sledgehammer took the 700 mile trek from Connecticut to the Ohio Transportation Research Center to then set a world record top speed. To put this into perspective, 17 years later, the Bugatti Veyron and its eight liter quad turbo W16 would reach a top speed of 253 miles an hour and the car was north of a million dollars. The old school small block Chevy was putting up a fight almost two decades later. The B2K Corvette's power band is heavily biased towards torque and low RPM grunt than high end horsepower. The engine configuration has a lot to do with this, specifically the TPI intake. This manifold features very long runners for air velocity at low RPM, but then becomes a restriction at the higher RPM ranges. 
Combined with the stock camshaft and head design, the twin turbo 5.7 TPI's flatline horsepower right around 5,000 RPM. But from 2,000 to 4,500 RPM, torque is monstrous and gives the C4 a characteristic of not needing to be wrung out to get moving. I can just imagine the highway passing power without even having to change gears. The C4 Callaway Twin Turbo was also a good value proposition of money to performance than its European counterparts, just as most Corvettes have always been. It came in at considerably less than the Porsche 911 Turbo, the Ferrari Testarossa, and Lamborghini Countach. Also, the B2K package was nothing more than an engine modification, so the rest of the vehicle was GM Corvette and maintenance was just as cheap as that. Well, given all its attributes, why did the Callaway C4 seemingly go under the radar? Well, first off, the added B2K package wasn't cheap, starting at around $20,000 and ranging upwards to $30,000 on top of the price of a Corvette. It was a hard sell to the run of the mill C4 crowd. If adjusted for inflation, it's approximately $55,000 on top of a $60,000 Corvette, which now when you put this into perspective is very, very costly. Also, the ability to produce vehicles as fast as they were being ordered was a nightmare. And out of the 400 plus orders, only around 125, give or take, were produced. That makes them a rarity. By 1990, the C4 ZR1 released with similar performance and really put the nail on the coffin for the Callaway Twin Turbo. Callaway would go on to continue to build Corvettes, but it is agreed that the most recognizable and noteworthy Corvette they produced was the Twin Turbo B2K and Sledgehammer. The Sledgehammer and Callaway Twin Turbo Corvette carry a legacy that old school processes and technologies can still be relevant and impressive. The 350 small block can be dated back to 1955, but with the help of some CNC machining, quality engine components, and twin turbo chargers, you can have a world-class automobile.